All right, today in the studio, I have with me Dawn Wolf. She is the uh, Director of Information Systems. I always want to say information technology, but it's information systems. Same thing. Yeah, same uh, thing. Uh, it's just diocese. systems encompasses more than maybe just technology. Technology, yeah. sure, sure. So. Thanks for being here, Dawn. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so, Dawn, you have been with the diocese for a while. Yeah. 25 years Oh, my goodness. Plus, yeah. That's quite a long time. It is. <laughs> it is, So. Yeah. I know that you have a little bit of a story about how you got here, but will you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up working here and doing what you do? Sure, sure. So I was born in uh, the wonderful little community called Fockton, uh, up in the northern part of South Dakota, raised on a farm by two loving parents. Um, I have two brothers and a sister, um, and they still, uh, one of my brothers uh, lives there and my folks still live there. I've been married to my amazing husband, Darwin, for 30 years. Darwin's an awesome guy. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> uh, and then I have two adult children and then one grandchild who, I'm, who I adore, all nice. of whom I adore. Nice, of course. <laughs> yeah. So First grandchild, so that's always fun. Oh, she's amazing. <laughs> um, and so how did I come to the diocese? Uh, believe it or not, it was a total God thing, right? Mm -hmm. Um uh, we were part of, and this might be a little flashback for those of us who've been around, uh, Renew. There was a movement within the Catholic Church back in the early 90s called Renew, and it was small group sharing, prayer groups, etc. And I happened to mention uh, that I was looking for full-time work. I had been working part-time while my oldest daughter was young. And it was people in the, the Renew group that said, oh, there's an opening <laughs> And so I worked my first four years here. I worked for the Catholic Foundation. Oh, okay. So I, I didn't did, know that. I did events. I and but that's oh, wow. where I dipped my toe into the technology aspect. Mm -hmm. And you know, a little light bulb. Hey, I'm good at this. Ah. Uh, this is so. Like, that's not what you went to school for. Nope. Oh, funny. Nope, <laughs> <laughs> nope not at all. <laughs> so, but uh, after like getting the bug, then I did. I took night classes, a lot of um, online classes, et cetera. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we're going to talk a little bit today about social media and technology and how it can maybe take up a little too much of our time because uh, it really does, especially lately. I don't know about you, but I find myself, I get home after work, I have to do my little crossword because I have to do a crossword every day. Mm -hmm. On your phone. <laughs> on my phone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you get on Facebook and, and 30 minutes later you look up and you're like, oh my gosh, how long was I just, you know, Abs. you're just amazed at how much time just went by. And sometimes I'll be sitting at one end of the couch and my husband will be sitting at the other end of the couch and we're both all, it is so easy to just lose yourself in that pretend world. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about about that and how to maybe go against that a little bit. Yeah, so absolutely. will you talk about, uh, we're going to talk about social media addiction a little bit. So what does that mean? If you're addicted to, how do you know? What what does it mean? Right. So, and, and I want to expand it beyond okay, social good. media. I think gaming and I think, frankly, any excessive use of technology, especially in our off time. Many of us have to use technology mm -hmm. Uh, during our work days, yep. right? And here. so, <laughs> yeah. right here, we're in front of our computers, you know, all the time. And so there's this almost natural progression where, you know, we can we can all kind of struggle with that. And, and I do struggle myself personally as well. So, you know, how do you, how do you pinpoint, do I have a problem, you mm -hmm. know? Um, one of the questions that you need, you really should ask yourself is, um, do I feel alone? Am I feeling more isolated? Am I feeling restless? Um, you know, are you finding yourself spending more time with your devices mm -hmm. uh, than with real live breathing human beings, right? right? God did not make us to be alone. No. We were meant to be in relationship. And so if we're spending too much time in front of technology, um, it can give us, it can really cause a lot of emotional um, spiritual and actually even physical issues. Right, right. Yeah. So what are some of those signs of addiction? I think you mentioned a couple there, but yes. I think there's a big list yeah. actually. <laughs> you know, if you find yourself really struggling at work to be attentive, um, a lot of people who use a lot of technology experience um, issues of um, distraction. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've even talked to adults who have said, you know, I really have a hard time sitting down and reading a book anymore. Because 
the way we're fed um, our information a lot of times these days is in bite-sized mm -hmm. pieces. And so to sit down and, and it's changing our brain, it's changing the neurology uh, of our brain. And um, so I've had friends share with me, you know, I struggled reading a book um, because I've been really noticing a lot more technology use. And so, um, you know, he, he went through a bit of a detox yep. uh, in order to correct that because he recognized mm -hmm. it, but we don't always recognize it. Yeah. Sometimes maybe someone else might say something to us. Mm, absolutely. And just like any other addiction, we'll be like, I don't spend too much time on social media. <laughs> and <laughs> I, defensive. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And you know, um, the, it's interesting. Is that one of the signs? Before you... <laughs> that is totally one of the signs. Do you okay. have someone who's mentioned your use of uh, technology or complained yeah. about it? Um, then that should be a, a, fa a red flag for you. Right. Um, I always challenge people, run a little experiment. You know, you talked about it earlier. Set the timer or alarm on your phone. If you don't know how to do that, set a kitchen timer. Mm -hmm. um, set it for 15 minutes. Then go in and start checking you know, do your games, do your, check your posts, check whatever you need to do. I think you'll be shocked at <laughs> what? It's been 15 minutes already and I only have done this. I only got halfway that. through my crossword puzzle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, if you go into panic mode when there is no internet, that should be a red flag. Um, if you use social media gaming to avoid people or to avoid some issue that's really um, heavy on your heart mm -hmm. um, that should be a, a red flag mm -hmm. yeah so if you'd rather spend time doing that than spending time with people or even doing stuff that you need to around the house right or, yeah. yeah oh yeah because that's so easy I don't want to do the dishes I'll play <laughs> one more round of solitaire <laughs> oh, yep been there yeah <laughs> um, any others that uh, or is that pretty much that pretty much checks yeah, them all are, off doesn't yeah. it okay mm -hmm. so you, you mentioned that God didn't create us to well sit in front of a screen all day, much less play games or go to social media on our phone. So this is a bad thing for it can, us. It can be, yes. Yeah. All things in moderation, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it can be, absolutely. Yeah. Um, how does it hurt? I, I, you and I are not priests. We're not theologians, but we're, we're Catholics, and we've been out in the world a little while. So how does hanging out on social media all the time, how does that hurt our relationship with God, do you think? Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? So it pulls us away and and it pulls us deeper into um, things that maybe are not of God, right? It's right. so easy. There's this, we're constantly being fed, oh, that story looks interesting. And then there's another one and another one. They're using algorithms. Mm -hmm. They're using artificial intelligence. Um, please know that there are teams of behavioral scientists and psychologists that work for these companies mm -hmm. and their goal is to keep us on the longer they can keep mm -hmm. us on the app, the more, uh, statistics they can offer to their advertisers, the more in app purchases we might be tempted to mm -hmm. make. It's all, we are being manipulated. So if you understand that and recognize that, um, that's your first, that's a first step into awareness and yeah. education around it. Yeah. And I think, um, you, you, when you talk about that, uh, if you haven't already heard about this book that, uh, we're reading in the diocese, many parishes are reading this, uh, a parish staffs, uh, school staffs, the Bishop has asked us to read a book called from, uh, Christendom to apostolic mission. Mm -hmm. And it talks about, um, how our culture, our secular culture kind of changes how we see life the lens yes it changes the lens that we look at life through and i think social media and and it pulls us away from our faith mm -hmm. from god mm -hmm. from it does it in such little ways we maybe don't even notice but i think social media and technology is a huge part of that because the culture is all fed oh amen through that yeah and it's like. sec secular culture right right so there's that's definitely more prevalent. If you go and specifically look, you can find great things. Yes, you can. But, Our social media, for instance. Right, right. <laughs> you know, and some of the podcasts, et cetera. Yeah. But, but you're absolutely right. And it, actually, there's, there's a lot of studies being done on social media. Uh, we're living in a time of the great human experiment. Yes. We mm -hmm. truly are. And so there's a lot of studies being done on what it's doing to adults, 
especially what it's doing to kids. Mm -hmm. We have a we have a skyrocketing rate of suicides, mm -hmm. and they're looking specifically at the relationship between social media use and teen suicide. Right. Because there's a beautiful lens slash filter in social media, and it leads to feelings of jealousy, mm -hmm. inadequ inadequacy. Um, you know, people don't feel like they're enough. They're constantly being judged. Wait a minute, I only had this many likes. Mm -hmm. You see, you hear about teens um, posting uh, selfies or pictures. Right. And if they don't get enough likes within a certain time, they take them down because they think oh, wow. it's, oh yeah, because they think oh, I failed. Right. And that causes, or there's just all kinds of, there's a whole host of issues around the way our kids are using technology that's yeah. causing issues, depression. Right. There's an overwhelming amount of depression, anxiety in our um, Zs, our uh, millennials, mm -hmm. and even obviously uh, older as well. Right. Well, and I know I've talked to a millennial or two recently, and they've mentioned to me that um, we talked about some of the things the diocese puts out and, and how they, you know, are they reading it? Are they consuming it? And like, well, I, if it's not like 140, only 140 words, I can't, my brain can't process it. So, yep. it, and that exactly. just floored me. Mm -hmm. I was like, how is this possible? But, you know, I'm in the Gen X, yep. a little on the top end of the Gen X, and, mm -hmm. and that just doesn't compute for me. Right. You know, it, you're right. We, it's really changing our brains. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. Um, so how do we, um, do you think we'd be better Catholics? <laughs> if we spend less time on social media. This is a great. I, I know <laughs> I, I can honestly say I personally would be. I'd be a yeah. better Catholic. I'd be a better wife. I'd be a better mom. I'd be a better grandma um, if I didn't have that pulling at me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I honestly, I struggle with it, struggle with it myself as well. Yeah. You know? um, however, what I've recognized that and I've started to do things like um, on my way to work, listening to great podcasts, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Ignition, lead them to life. Um, I listened to, I've started the Bible in a year um, oh, series, yeah. which is awesome. And I can't tell you the difference that it makes um, your morning and yeah. how you feel. Um, and so recognizing that and making those choices, right. acting on it. Right. Yeah. I know for a little while I was trying to I only went on Facebook like a couple of times a week mm -hmm. for a little while and it was wonderful. <laughs> then I yeah. don't really remember why, but it you started slid. creeping back in mm -hmm. and now I'm like, you know, a couple of times a day, whatever it is. And I'm like, and I, it makes me so much crabbier mm -hmm. and it, yeah. Right. I think Bishop even uh, said to us the other day, it, social media can cause a sense of bewilderment and, and anger. anger. Yes. Right. And that's so true. And when your heart is feeling restless, when you're feeling restless like that, um, a good friend, Joe Rutten, um, recently um, did something or, you know, had a little, believe it or not, on Facebook, of but course. he had a life, <laughs> he had a life session, but it really spoke to me about being restless. And it's so easy to reach for our phone. But when you set it down, do you find that that feeling of restlessness has gone away? Right. Mine never does. Right. I, it, it compounds it. Right. right? Well, and, he, and when you're on it, the re the restlessness doesn't go away either. Because right. eventually, I don't know about you, but I'll be on there for a little while. And then I'm like, OK, I'm now I'm bored with this. Yeah. Now I need to go find something else. Or well, angry or bewildered. Right. Right. And you yeah. Now I'm down. angry because yeah. of all the stuff I saw on there. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> it's this weird fake world that mm -hmm. I think if you can remember that what Okay, people post pictures of their kids and things like that, but a lot of it is they only post the good things. So mm -hmm. it's like that that's what I mean by the kind of fake world. Yep. And we can't compare ourselves to mm -hmm. that world because it's just not real. It's not it's not everybody's everyday life. Right. Everybody has struggles and mm -hmm. and it's just you know, the other piece too is that one thing that I, you know, back to the relationship, mm -hmm. the human relationship. Um, I used to think, you know, oh, Facebook's a great place because if I hear about a friend who's, who's a loved one has passed away, then I can put a little message there. But you know what? Hundreds of people do that. Yeah. What matters is getting in the car and driving to your friend or, 
or, or using them. the phone yes. and calling your yes. friend and to, and telling them there's a stronger emotional relationship connection there. Yeah. And yeah. Doing that. And even even things like, you know what, send them a card instead mm. of sending them a text. Mm. Amen. There's, I mean, I'm probably the weirdest. I hate text. I just it's like you can't just call me and just ask me that question or <laughs> or talk to me for a few minutes, you know, or call me on my birthday instead of sending me a text and that's it. Yeah, right. It does. It feels less. You, not even a card. Yeah. And and less it less honest. It is less. It is. It takes five seconds. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, so. oh, hey, I remembered it's your birthday. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been guilty of it myself. And as soon as I do it, I'm like, you know, I could have done better mm -hmm. there. And so I'll try to call or, you know, whatever it is. But yeah, it's just it's made our lives easier and worse all at the same time. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Um, OK. So how do we detox from this thing? Help so, us. <laughs> so, okay. So for some people, you may just have to do a, you know, a, a jolt to your system mm -hmm. and detox for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Just set it down, at, hand it to your a loved one, a friend and say, keep my phone for 24 hours. Right. You know, turn it off mm -hmm. and, and don't like go on a silent retreat, oh, right? Boy. And leave it at home. Uh -huh. Can't leave it at home. Leave it in the car. Right. 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 Um, the other thing is, one thing I recognized, um, the distraction during my work day, turn off. Uh, my phone is always on silent anymore. Yep. Turn off all your notifications, oh, yeah. et cetera, because you're working away, ding, ding, <laughs> you know, and you're, you're squirreling, you know, the whole day. And that's not good for right. your productivity. Um, set your, go into your phone and set screen time notifications. Oh yeah. 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 That's a big one. Cause that can, you, you look at the amount of time you're like, oh, seven hours this week. Yes. You know? Or when it drops, you're like, Oh, good yeah. job. Go me. <laughs> you know, um, uh, you know, there's lots of different things like that. Um, leave it in your purse. Um, you know, there's some great ways. Um, a lot of our Wi-Fi systems in our houses now have, uh, parental controls or controls mm -hmm. where you can say, you know what, we're turning off Wi-Fi at this time oh. of night. And we're saying, you know, that's, that's a great idea. Just listen, we know we need this. Let's read a book. Let's go for a walk. Let's um, play a board yep. game. You know, my grandchild loves board games yep. and it's been wonderful. You know, she comes comes in and let's do you yeah. know, let's play guess who let's and then your kids can't be laying in bed after i'm mm. good night mom mm -hmm. and dad and yeah. then they're laying in bed basically. that's <laughs> the other thing is you know parents i strongly urge you you have a place where phones go at night they do not go in your kids's bedrooms right you have a place and they're plugged in and they're charging and they get it in the morning yeah absolutely yeah. um real quick uh there's some ways we can use our faith mm. to get us through this Oh, right. Pray. Yeah. Absolutely. And, I think God just, wants us to pray about even this stuff, doesn't oh, he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, Lord, please um, help me with, I'm struggling with this um, technology use. I'm struggling. Give me, um, give me the desire to be with my spouse, my kids, and set that down. Yeah. Help me. And continue. Keep asking him. God wants what's so, what's good for us and yeah. what's best for us. And so he will, um, acknowledge that prayer and then listen listen mm. to that voice we have such a hard time doing listen that. to the holy spirit giving you that desire to do something else and act on it yeah yeah you know and keep praying just yep. keep asking him for yep. the little stuff yeah great advice um do you have some resources people can use i, I do um we have there's a lot of really great content filtering software out there and some of it is free okay. or very little cost and content filtering software is really a way to say all right i know that facebook is a problem for me and um i know instagram you can specifically in the content filtering uh software you can say block facebook mm -hmm. you know block instagram um you and like i talked about turn off Wi-Fi at a certain mm -hmm. point um, during the during the night. Frankly, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of parents that I know turn off Wi-Fi at 10 p.m. That That's, way, even yeah. if their kids have their phone downstairs, they, you know, well, <laughs> you still have cellular, but still, right, you know. Right. <laughs> um, so parental controls, there's some really great tools that you can put on your phone mm -hmm. that help with filtering and monitoring. One is Bark. Uh, another one is called Protect Young Eyes. Okay. So even though it, it um, it's 
It's a lot of times used by parents uh, for kids' phones, but you can use it on your own sure. as well. Sure, sure. If you're struggling with techno um, pornography, mm -hmm. there's a Covenant Eyes mm -hmm. is another great app. And it also, it has, it uses both technology and a accountability partner. Oh, nice. Yeah. So there's a reporting and there's that, you know, okay, I need to answer to my accountability yep. partner yep. on how I'm utilizing it. Um, so, you know, those are some things that I can think of uh, off the top of my head. But Great. Yeah. That's really helpful. Mm -hmm. Dawn, thank you so much for yeah. coming in to talk to us about this uh, crazy topic. <laughs> This human experiment. <laughs> yes, it is an experiment. <laughs> that for we sure. are subjects. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for being here. Thanks. All right. Next week on the show, I uh, will have uh, Deacon Tim Dickus and his wife, Julie. They'll come in and talk about uh, their life as a deacon and a deacon's wife. So we'll get to hear a little bit of their story. Um, also, if you haven't checked us out on, I'm going to talk about social media of, on YouTube. Uh, this show is on video on YouTube, along with some of our other podcasts that we create. So uh, check us out there. That's it for us today. Uh, hope you'll join us again next week for more Catholic Views.